Hello and welcome to part one of my IBM Tivoli Identity Manager provisioning example. In this example, I'll be showing you auto provisioning done by the item 5.0 server where I will auto provision one item account and three Unix targets through a single provisioning action of a create of a person. Let's start off here by logging into the Identity Manager as an administrative user. When I log into the system, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a person record, and that person record will have a role that I've predefined. That role will grant a user an ITIM account, an AIX account on AIXP2, an AIX account on AIXP3, and one Linux target. We'll go to the Manage Users under the Common Task, and what we'll do is we'll go out there and create a user. I've preset some PuTTY sessions, so I can validate that the users we're about to create don't already live on the system. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grep for a user account that exists that does not exist already and we'll append the last one I created DR9A11. As you can see on AIXP2 highlighted up at the top here that account does not exist. I'll do the same thing on AIXP3 and I'll do the same thing on, a on the Aldora server and you can see the account does not exist. I'll go over to the item interface here and what I'll do is I'll actually search on the item side for an account and we'll call the account last name Ricks. There is no Ricks on this user so my return is going to come back with nothing found. Wildcard search was there and it tells me I have no user with the last name of Ricks. Let's go out there and create our new user and what we'll do is we'll create a new user called Denise Ricks and we will give her a unique ID of DR9A11. Just as we searched for on the system, the user did not exist. So, let's go into the TIM interface and create that account. Now, in this example, I'd like to select a specific business unit that this user belongs to. So, I will go out here and hit search and I will find an organizational unit to put this user in. I'll define the fidelity one as the one I'd like to add the user to. And I'll select OK. I'll now select continue for my create user and I'll select the user's name and input the information relative to the account. Ricks is the last name. DR9A11. And here I will add an organizational role that I predefined that's going to grant the user all of these targets that I had preset. I'll select continue and I will set a password for the user of triple A, triple four, IBM P2. And I'll schedule that to happen immediately. I've submitted the provisioning request and the targets are now going to have the request honored by the system. We'll go to the view my request from the managed users view and at the same time we'll go over to the targets and we'll check each of them to see if the account's been created by item. I'll select more on the Etsy password file and grep for the user and I can note that the account is now present. Each of the targets contain the account as I simply go out there and look for them. The account's been auto-provisioned by ITIM and we can now go back into ITIM and look at the audit log and show us that it actually created the account. Here's the view all pending requests by users. The request will show up here in our view request and we'll now be able to see the account information from today that we simply created the new person and we selected an attribute that triggered the auto provisioning. Here's our successful status here in our request view. If I select the new user, I'll see that the system had honored the request and gave me a success. Note the process detail here. The process detail in the example will show me the order of the provisioning request that happened. We did a create person 
The create person triggered the auto provisioning via the item workflow for enforce policy. Enforce policy triggered the ordered provisioning that we defined, that ordered provisioning being the provisioning to all of the targets. The targets are defined here in order, and the order was what I had preset the server to do these in. Each service that I had defined had an order in which they needed to be completed. The item account first, the POSIX AIXP3 account, the P2 account, and ultimately the last ordered provisioning request would have been the Red Hat Linux 5 account. Let's now go over and log in to one of these targets here and we'll pick one of the Unix targets and we'll log into AIXP2 as our user. We selected the user by the name of DR9A11 and a password of AAA444 IBM P2. I'm granted access to the system and I had provisioned this by item. We'll now go in to the item interface which is where we created this account and we'll log in as a trusted user. So we'll simply log out of the administrator view here. We'll change our URL to be the common user. Oops. and we'll log in as our account. As you can see, the user's been granted access to the identity manager user interface. The user now has the password, the potential to manage his account on what he's been granted, and in this example, he'd be able to change his password. We'll go here and select the user change password and we'll submit a password change for this user. We select the old password and we'll give him a new password. New password will be Unix greater than DOS and we'll submit that. The password change has been submitted. The targets are defined underneath. Password synchronization is enabled on the server. The server will now honor the request. The user submitted one password change. All of his accounts, they'll all be taken care of. We log off of the identity manager self page and we'll go into the server now and we'll look at that request and we'll look at the audit history of that request. I'll log in again as the administrator account. When we log in, you'll note that the account allowed the user to validate his information and then he would be able to then log in. What we'll do now is we'll switch over and note the user DR9811 was allowed to log into the system with the old password and we changed it to Unix greater than DOS. Let's now open up another session and we'll log in under that account. We'll log into AIXP3 as our user DR9A11 and the password now is Unix greater than DOS. The system allowed entry as our trusted user that we defined, indicating that our password change that we did as the end user was a success. And that is the first part of my demo here. Provisioning through item to create an account, auto provision roles, and validate the creation of the accounts and some password changes done by the system and by the end user.